quick revision video on how to balance awkward redox equations. So sometimes in exams you get asked to balance redox equations and it can really take quite a long time out of your exam time and you know if they're going to take you more than a couple of minutes then it's not really worth doing them but hopefully this method is going to help you get them done in the amount of time that you've got. So they're going to be tricky to balance in the usual way, the trial and error way, because you've got common atoms in lots of different substances in the equation. So you think you've got one atom balanced and you put the number in and then it just knocks everything out. So hopefully this method will help you to sort that out. So oxidation numbers can help and the rule is the total increase in oxidation number, obviously in the oxidation process, must equal the total decrease in the oxidation number in the reduction process. And if you think about it logically, when something's oxidized, it loses electrons. So those electrons have to go somewhere. Where do they go? They go to the reduced species that gains them. So the electrons have to be equal in both processes. So I'm going to look at a couple of examples. Here's the first one. If you wanted to pause the video now and have a go, just see how long it takes you to do it the traditional way, unless you already know about this um, oxidation number method, go for it and then play on when you're ready. So basically I'm going to follow a three-step method with this. So the first one is to summarize the information we've got in that statement. So S plus HNO3 goes to H2SO4, NO2 and H2O. Next step is to assign oxidation numbers for the atoms that change their oxidation numbers. So sulfur starts at zero, it's an element, it goes to plus six in the sulfuric acid. And the nitrogen in the nitric acid starts out at plus five and it drops to plus four in NO2. So step three is balance only those species that change their oxidation number. Remember that comes from that rule, the total increase must equal the total decrease. So you can see the oxidation process, the sulfur gets oxidized from zero to plus six, so that must be a loss of six electrons. Those six electrons have to go somewhere, but the reduction process only involves the gain of one electron. So basically we need six nitric acids to accept those six electrons so we're going to have to form six NO2s. And then the final step is to just balance any remaining atoms. But well, we don't want to mess around with any of the things that we've considered so far. So these we need to leave alone, otherwise it's going to mess it all up. So it's just the water. So you can see we're going to need two H2Os to balance the remaining atoms. So here's the second one. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at that one. So step one, summarizing the information, we get that. Step two, assign oxidation numbers for atoms that change. So we've got negative one in the I and HI going to zero in the element, plus six in the sulfuric acid S going to minus two in H2S. So next step, balancing the species that change their oxidation number. So you can see the oxidation process, the iodine, is oxidized from minus one to zero, so it's losing one electron, whereas the reduction process goes from plus six all the way down to minus two, so that must involve eight electrons. So we're gonna need an eight in front of the HI, but a four in front of the I2, because obviously it's diatomic. And then the final one, balance the remaining atoms, we need four H2Os.